guys, welcome to the channel. This is Hassan Shirazi. If you're wondering what you heard at the beginning of the video, yes, that is the sound of a V8 and it just sounded amazing. I am driving a 2008 Lexus ISF and this is one of my dream cars. This car was meant to go head to head with Mercedes-Benz C63 AMG, the W204 chassis and BMW M3, the E92 chassis but I would take this over those two cars. And I will tell you why throughout this video, why I would pick this car over those two other German muscle brands that they also had V8s in the mid 2000s. As usual, we're gonna give you a little overview of this Lexus ISF, about its history and how Lexus came to make this car. We're gonna also tell you a little bit about the interior, the features of this car, and also exterior design. And towards the end, we're gonna take this car for a little drive. And we're also gonna give you the pros and cons of owning this Lexus ISF. If you're new to this channel, this is not the first Lexus that we showcase in our channel. We've also had Lexus RX 500H F Sport Performance, and we also had a Lexus RX 450H. Those two Lexus were number one luxury SUV in the United States, but this is a totally different beast. And if you like, you can click on the link on the top right and check out the videos on those two Lexuses. And as usual, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. That's one of the ways that gets our channel growing. And I hope you like this episode, guys. Thank you. All right, let's tell you a little bit more about this 2008 Lexus ISF, the high performance version of the IS series that I recently purchased in this rare color called ultrasonic blue mica. This car was very special to me because I've always wanted to have a performance V8, either a C63 AMG, the W204, which is uh, also the competitor to this car, also the BMW M3, the E92 chassis, which also sported the V8. They all came in the mid 2000s. And this is basically Lexus's answer to those cars. However, both the AMG and M Motorsports, they had a lot more budget to spend on their respective cars. Although the IS series of Lexus was never meant to go toe in toe with those Teutonic brands, however, Lexus appointed a gentleman by the name of Yuki Fiko Yaguchi as a chief engineer to build a Japanese muscle car that could kind of go toe in toe with those German brands. And he's the same gentleman that was in charge of uh, building the MK4 Toyota Supra. That's a very popular car. And he came up with an idea. The only way to do it is to stuff a V8 into an IS because it will give it a great sound. It will give it a great performance. And somehow they made it happen. Within a short span of time, they debuted the car in 2007 auto shows and the car actually was sold in Japan in late 2007 and it started entering the United States as a 2008 model as well. Now what attracted me to purchase this particular Lexus ISF is that it's a one owner car. It's remained its whole life in Southern California. It was very well maintained by the previous owner that happens to be a very, very nice gentleman as well. and. Uh, there is no accident in its record. It's not modified. So this car as being one of the 5,118 models that was sold in the United States from 2008 all the way to 2012. It is actually in very, very pristine shape. It has a little bit of chips and dings and whatnot. Those are minor that uh, my detailer will have a full paint correction on it. So we're going to fix all of that. But it's a very, very uh, unmolested, unmodified example. And I'm very lucky to have acquired this very, very historic example of the Lexus ISF. And this car happens to be my son's favorite color. He loves the color blue. I love the color orange, as you guys know on my previous videos I've done on uh, my Mercedes, my Raptor, uh, Tundra, the Sequoia. You know, I just love the color orange. But my son uh, really likes the color blue and my wife is the one 
actually going to be driving this car. So this car is going to be my wife's car. She barely drives. So this car is going to have probably about three or 4,000 miles in the next three or four years that we are planning to keep this car. So I'm very fortunate to have acquired this ISF with this pedigree behind it. And the next few years, as you have seen the trend in the high performance Japanese or European cars like the Acura NSX, the MK4, the E30, BMW E46, E39, these cars are going to be worth more money because the cars that they build nowadays, they're all either electrified or partially electrified and they don't really have a soul to them. These cars of the 2000s, the 90s, and 80s, they actually have something nostalgic about them that the newer cars do not have and they lack. All right, now let's talk about one of the most important things about this 2008 Lexus ISF. It's the engine. It has a 5.0 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine, code name 2UR-GSE. This car has about 416 horsepower and 371 pound-feet of torque. It has made it to the ground via an 8-speed sport direct shift gear with paddle shifters on the steering wheel and it does a 0-60 in about 4.5 seconds and the top speed of this car is about 170 miles per hour. Now this car weighs about 3,750 pounds and the fuel economy of this car is actually not so bad. It's 60 miles per gallon in the city and 23 miles per gallon in the highway for an average of 19 to 20 miles per gallon which is actually not bad for this car. Fun fact about this V8 engine that you see in this Lexus is that although it's very small in the small car but it has a two-stage intake system so one of them is basically starts when you start up the car and you're driving all the way to 3500 rpm but after 3500 rpm the second intake system opens up and it just makes this glorious sound that it just puts smiles on your face all the way to whatever speed you're going now one interesting thing about this car that you can see on the engine cover you have these four slots here and four slots here that means it's four and four cylinders which means eight cylinders and I really like the F brand that you see the F logo right here with the little blue around it so that's really nice because it actually matches the color of this car. Alright guys now let's talk about the wheels and brakes on this Lexus ISF. The wheels on this car are BBS forged wheels they're 19 inches in diameter they're wrapped on 225 40 Goodyear directional tires in the front and two 55 35 directional tires in the rear now as far as the braking system on this Lexus ISF Lexus was pretty ingenious and they paired up with Brembo and they came up with six piston brake calipers in the front the rotors are cross drilled and 14.1 inches in the front on the rears it's a two piston calipers and the rotors are 13.6 inches you need that much braking because this car's top speed is 170 miles per hour and you want to break down in a safe manner you have to have this much of braking system on this car and Lexus nailed it in the park with this. Alright guys, now let's talk a little bit about the exterior styling of this Lexus ISF. One of the first things that you notice is how much wider the fender flares on this car is compared to a regular IS of the same era and also this nice hood ball so that Lexus could fit this V8 under the hood. and It's very nice and simple and elegant. Obviously this is a 15 year old car the headlights you got the xenon headlights they're adaptable then you got the nice fog lights over here and i really like this area that you can actually put your fist through it these ducts that you see on both sides they take the air and they cool down the braking system of this car and also the air comes out from the other side that i'm going to show you to you later the grill is very very nice and elegant it's got the mesh grill and also some air also goes through here to cool down the engine also you have more area down here that will cool down the engine as well now as I said this car has some rock chips and whatnot I will fix that as we go on so you have the sonar detectors both on this driver side and the passenger side that gives you a little bit of understanding where the car is so you don't hit any obstacles. Coming to the side of this car, you can definitely see a little gap on the front and rear wheels between where the uh, wheels sit and the fender flare. So I might get a 50 millimeter spacer to space it out on each side and also change the tires to 245s in the front and 275s in the rear. Now, I really, really love this flare fender as I mentioned earlier and where you had the cool air coming from the front those ducts that I showed you earlier 
and they cool down the brakes and the hot air actually escapes through these slits so that's really nice got the really nice f uh badge right here the same one that you saw under the hood and also in a few other areas in the car nice simple mirrors i like the overall sleek design of this car going towards the back you got the slight bit of chrome moldings around the car thank god they didn't put too much chrome on this car you got this really nice and sleek roof and you got the obviously the moon roof that i have it tilted you also have the shark fin antenna and on the back as in the front you have the 19 inch bbs forged wheels coming to the back of this car i really like how the rear bumper and the tail lights and the trunk they kind of have a nice good symmetrical shape to them or as far as the badging you see lexus of glendale this is where the car was mainly serviced at you have the lexus logo right here and then the isf obviously the f that you see um, in numerous places in the car and this is how you open the trunk there is a little button right here that you press and it opens and you actually have a decent amount of room in this car it's about 13 point three cubic inches and there's also a little uh, space that connects to the uh, rear seats as well and you got some cargo netting over here so you can put a few things in here now the trunk lid is actually very very heavy so you got to be careful when you close this one and you can definitely see these little sensors these are for the sonar detectors that you also had in the front now you have it also in the rear as well which helps you park this car uh, when you don't see where you're exactly going gives you proximity beeps and whatnot and one of the most important things about the rear of this car are these quad exhaust tips that they're technically uh, kind of fake there is a little cutout between them much like a lot of the newer cars but they make a very very menacing sound and they just look very very cool take a listen moving on and talking about the interior of this car let's start off with the door the driver's door very nice and sleek i like this uh, carbon fiber that they use on this car you have obviously all your power buttons they are all auto so one touch up and one touch down it brings all the windows down this driver's side and also the passenger side have three memory setting for the seats you got a little bit of room in here not a lot but it's a little fold out you can put a small a bottle over here and then you can put some other things in here obviously a speaker over there as well then you got the obviously you're greeted with the lexus on the door seals and you have the isf floor mats you got the brush aluminum pedals the rest pedal and then the gas and brake and coming to one of the things that a lot of people don't like or like about this car i personally like it is the seats the seats they are nice and sporty they hug you uh, in all the places that you want it to and but but some people have said that if you sit here for many hours they actually have some back pain and also for a taller person there's not a, a lot of room but i'm five nine and a half my wife is five foot tall so we have no problem i really like this little touch that lexus put they put the f brand on the side of this car it's also you can see it on the rear seats as well you also have a 10-way power seat on this car the interior of this car is very modern for a mid 2000s car obviously is dated for 2023 but i'm gonna start it up for you guys so you can see this is how the car starts up i like how you have the blue arm on the tachometer and speedometer and you got your little display button right here it displays the average tank average current mpg uh, average speed uh, gear position which we are not you can put it in a gear position like one and it goes all the way to eight um, then you have um, you can just leave it blank as well or the temperature outside you also have um, the oil temperature you have your battery how much it is uh, charged as well then you have obviously your coolant temperature and your fuel and it shows that the car has 108 
1,886 miles right now. Coming to the steering wheel, it's one of the first cars that mainstream the paddle shifter. Uh, you got the plus, and again, it's blue, as you see, so it matches the color of the car. Uh, obviously, the display button, the act, uh, voice activation for your phone, the volume button, and then you can change the radio stations or the modes. And the steering wheel is actually pretty nice. It, again, has that F badge in here. And also, it can be adjusted power, as you see, up and down. It's very nice. One of the most important things about this car, you can turn on or off the traction control. Uh, and then you can put it in sport mode or snow mode. And obviously, you have your engine start stop button. And the infotainment system is obviously very, very old. You can uh, do various settings with the climate, uh, low, high, whatnot, dual. Uh, it's a dual climate control, but each side you can change the temperature with the button that you see. Uh, and right here you can see up and down. It has a CD changer. This is an old school CD changer. And then you got your information, calendar, screen settings, language, maintenance, and whatnot. And display, you can have the screen off or on. Contrast, brightness. And you have your menu here as well. Different things that you can change. My places, setup, select user volume, destination, obviously where you want to go on your uh, navigation for the map. We chose California, Nevada. This is how old school this car is. And this is how you see the map. And I've used this navigation screen. It does work. It's just very, very old. Coming down here, you got the various uh, settings for your climate control then you have these little three buttons that you can adjust the uh, clock on this car volume button this car also is equipped with a mark levinson premium surround sound system which is actually pretty cool uh, different settings for your cd changer and right here that you see that you have the uh, cigarette lighter the owner of this car has installed a, a camera which is one of the must-haves to have especially in california where people drive crazy Right here you have your uh, cigarette lighter and your ashtray and you can actually hide this if you press this right here. You have the heated seats both for driver and passenger. It's pretty nice. Gear shifter is a little bit faded but it's leather wrap and you can, it's on P right now, you can put it on reverse. Obviously the backup light comes on. Uh, then you have your neutral, you have your, uh, you can put it on D. Then if you want to change the gears manually you have your plus and minus obviously you got you can do it with the paddle shifter and we're gonna put it back on drive then you got a little cup holder right here that you see then you have a, another cup holder right here and this thing slides back and forth it's very nice and comfortable I like how it has the blue the ultrasonic blue stitched on the side also if you notice on the seats too you have the little blue stitching on the sides it's very nice subtle and also on the door on the door um, that you see you got a nice leather but you have the blue also stitched in that as well as far as the sunroof you have few choices you can have it as tilt and right here or you can open it all the way and opens for you then again you can move the dial back to its neutral position and it closes it for you so that's pretty cool I like this headliner it's a very very nice and soft I think it's like a velour type material it's very comfortable also same thing on the um, sun visors it's very nice and comfortable rear view mirror it has three settings for opening your garage automatically and it's a auto adjusted now it's a little bit faded that you see the glass itself is a little bit faded and it also has the position of uh, the compass position as well too right now it's on the west all right let's talk a little bit about the back seats of this car again these back seats are also bucket seats then this car is only a four passenger car you cannot sit anybody in the center and i really like a couple of factors just like the front seats you have the f sport in here 
you'll also have the F Sport in here as well. And once you're sat in the back seats, you have a little armrest right here. And if you want some cup holders, you have adjustable cup holders here, two of them here. So that's nice and nifty. It's very nice and comfortable uh, hand rest. And this area is not removable, so you cannot put anybody in the middle uh, seat here, middle area of this car. Then you also have a little ashtray right here. You have a couple of climate uh, vents as well here. A little bit of space here that you can put some stuff in here. One thing that this car does not have is no space in the rear door, so you cannot put any cups or anything in here. Um, and there's not a ton of room uh, in the back seats. Now, I am five nine and a half, so I can actually fit my uh, feet in here without any problem. But if you're a taller person, you will definitely have a uh, hard time uh, fitting in the back of this car. You also have your own lighting in the back here. You can turn on some lights in here. These are LED lights. All right, guys, driving this uh, 2008 ultrasonic blue Mica ISF. I got to tell you, it's just a fun car to drive it has 108,830 miles on it currently and it just feels solid the well-built quality and reliability of Lexus um, I mean it just feels really nice and firm the seats are very comfortable there's no uh, rips or tears in the seats this car is just amazing it's very torquey especially past 3500 rpm when the second uh, secondary uh, induction kicks in it's just it's just an amazing car now it does have a kind of a harsher ride but i've always liked those and uh it's just an amazing car and um for a 5.0 liter v8 it actually has a decent fuel economy as well it gets you about 16 miles per gallon in the city and 23 in the highway for an average of right now we have 18 miles per gallon and uh, that's not bad that's not bad for a 15 year old car with a high performance V8 Toyota and you know the parent company of Lexus they did a great job with this car comparing this car to its competitors which were the BMW M3 and the C63 they had so many problems with their Venus problems or the rod bearing and it could be a lot of uh, thousands of dollars in maintenance cost so people that are looking for a mid 2000 muscle car and that gets your, it's, it's very exciting to drive. Um, it's reasonable as far as pricing, it's affordable and it's very reliable. Um, you should look no further than this Lexus ISF or the other F series if you want a little bit newer like the RCF or GSF, which basically they have the same engine, but they have a little bit more um, refining uh, uh, features you know as far as the infotainment systems of uh, transmission and so forth a little bit more power compared to this car all right guys we're gonna give this car a little bit of gas see how much pickup it has oh my god that second green intake kicking in oh it's just absolutely intoxicating guys such a fun such a fun car on a beautiful day in Huntington Beach California oh my god this is a this is definitely one of my uh, favorite moments, sitting in this car uh, with this much history behind it and telling you about the driving experience. As time goes by, as years goes by, these Lexus ISFs are becoming much more desirable, especially the 2010 and on more when they have the Torsen limited slip differentials. Uh, mine, unfortunately, doesn't have it, but it's still part of history this you know for 15 year old car being in this absolutely uh, amazing shape and you know driving the way it is it's just an absolute blast and I'm very lucky to be one of the owners of these 5,000 Lexus ISFs that have been imported to the United States Thank you so much for watching this episode of Rad Rides covering this very exciting and nostalgic mid-2000s muscle cars coming from Japan 
I'm really excited that I got a chance to A, buy this car, this very, very well maintained and relatively low miles uh, 2008 Lexus ISF in ultrasonic blue mica. And I will keep this car for at least a good three years. Actually, my wife is the one that is going to be driving this car. And uh, we're very really excited to be owning a part of history. Remember, nowadays they don't make cars like this anymore unfortunately a lot a lot of the cars are becoming partially uh electric or fully electric and they don't have these type of cars anymore you know the good old v8 uh that just you know speaks to your soul when you punch down the gas and it's just amazing car i can't wait to do more episodes of this car but that some other uh, Toyota or Lexus brands, maybe some doing some comparison, compare and contrast. And as usual, make sure to like, share and subscribe and click the notification button. And until we see you guys next time, thank you.